Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for July 20th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Go ahead and get started. Today is National Moon Day, Columbia Independence Day, Crown Prince Haakon's Day, International Chess Day, Limpira Day, and National Fortune Cookie Day. Go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. We pray to you, O Lord. You hear us in the morning. At sunrise, we offer our prayer and wait for your answer. Our reading for today starts with Exodus chapter 10, verse 1. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his officials, in order that I may show these signs of mine among them, and that you may tell your children and grandchildren how I have made fools of the Egyptians, and what signs I have done among them, so that you may know that I am Yahweh. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, so that they may worship me. For if you refuse to let my people go tomorrow, I will bring locusts into your country. They shall cover the surface of the land, so that no one will be able to see the land. They shall devour the last remnant left you after the hail, and they shall devour every tree of yours that grows in the field. They shall fill your houses and the houses of all your officials and of all the Egyptians something that neither your parents nor your grandparents have seen from the day they came on earth to this day. Then he turned and went out from Pharaoh. Pharaoh's official said to him, How long shall this fellow be a snare to us? Let the people go so that they may worship Yahweh their God. Do you not understand that Egypt is ruined? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. And he said to them, Go, worship Yahweh your God. But which ones are to go? Moses said, We, we will go with our young and our old. We will go with our sons and daughters and with our flocks and herds because we have Yahweh's festival to celebrate. Pharaoh said to them, Yahweh indeed will be with you if ever I let your little ones go with you. Plainly you have some evil purpose in mind. No, never. Your men may go and worship Yahweh, but that is what you are asking. For that is what you are asking. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt so that the locusts may come upon it and eat every plant in the land, all that the hail has left. So Moses stretched out his staff over the land of Egypt, and Yahweh brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. When morning came, the east wind had brought the locusts. The locusts came upon all the land of Egypt and settled on the whole country of Egypt, eat such a dense swarm of locusts as had never been before, nor ever shall be again. They covered the surface of the whole land so that the land was black, and they ate all the plants in the land and all the fruit of the trees that the hail had left. Nothing green was left, no tree, no plant in the field, in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh hurriedly summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I, I have sinned against Yahweh your God and against you. Do forgive my sin just this once and pray to Yahweh your God that all, at the least God remove this deadly thing from me. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to Yahweh. Yahweh changed the wind into a very strong west wind, which lifted the locusts and drove them into the Red Sea. Not a single locust was left in all the country of Egypt. But Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart. He would not let the Israelites go.
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our reading for today, um, in many ways, is very similar to what we have seen before, but also very different. So I'll uh, just notice that, right? So we're on the eighth plague. So we're in the sort of, sort of second of, or the third of three cycles. And for the uh, the sort of pattern, this one has a lot of um, a lot of detail. And also a sort of bargaining and, and Pharaoh actually giving in to a certain extent. There is, just like many of the signs before, a very clear warning. This is what's going to happen. Locusts are going to come. They're going to eat up everything. This is presumably long enough after the last plague. You might remember the last plague, there was hail and it destroyed about half of the crops, but the other crops, the wheat and the spelt, I believe, had not quite come up, and so they were not ruined. They have come up now enough that if there was something that happened to them, that's it. That's all of the crops for this year. That is not good. I will never financially recover from this, right? That's, that's what Pharaoh was thinking. There's, there's no way to recover from this. They may have a little bit of stored up, but probably not enough. So this is going to be really, truly devastating. Once again, Moses and Aaron go to Pharaoh and say, this is exactly what's going to happen. And then they leave. And Pharaoh's officials go to him and say, what are you doing? Don't you realize that we're not going to recover from this? Don't you realize that this is going to completely devastate our entire economy? It's going to devastate our entire people. This nation, this kingdom has lasted for 2,000 years and you're going to just flit it away because you won't listen. Listen, buddy, this is the eighth time that they have come to us to tell us what is going to happen It's going to happen. And you have the chance to do something. So Pharaoh calls Moses and Aaron back. This is the first time that this has happened. Before the plague. And Pharaoh says, Okay, uh, again, I have sinned against the Lord. He said that before. Actually, he doesn't actually say that. But he says, Go worship Yahweh your God. Right? Just, Just go. Who's going, by the way? And they go, well, everybody's going. It's going to be our young, our old, our males, our females, our sons, our daughters. Everybody has to go. We're going to bring our animals with us. Like, this is a big festival to the Lord. And Pharaoh says, no. No. I'll let your men go, sure. The ones who deserve to worship. But I'm not going to let everybody else go. You're going to do something funny. You're going to just go away. Well, that's kind of the plan. Yeah. And Pharaoh knows that. So he's saying, well, okay, I'll just let your men go, but your women, your children, your old, all all of them are going to need to stay here so that that the men will come back. And Pharaoh says, or, and Moses says, no, 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 no. We all need to go. So Pharaoh says, nope, I won't let you go. And so, locusts come. And they eat up every single green thing on in the land of Egypt. They eat up all the wheat. They eat up all the spelt. They eat up the leaves on the trees. They just decimate things. This is one of those natural disasters that we tend to not experience, but especially in that area, this is something that would happen. Flo- swarms, flocks of swarms, I guess of locusts come in and they just eat everything and then they leave. Um, if you've seen the most recent Jurassic Park movie, this is kind of a a, a, a point of a plot point um, where there are these prehistoric locusts who are coming and just completely destroying certain crops. And there's that's a, that has a big impact. Um, this is exactly what happens here in Egypt. 
We also have, again, the sort of, uh, maybe a, a, this is maybe the most severe or, or um, ramped up conversation language around God hardening Pharaoh's heart. Um, it begins with this idea that like, that God says, I'm, I'm going to allow all of this to happen so that they will be, it will be so incredibly clear that God is more powerful. Now, the gods of Egypt are not. That you will see, Hebrews, that you, the Egyptians, will see that Yahweh alone is Lord. And that's a little bit troubling, can be, right? Because God is using seemingly coercion and violence. And that is just something to be cautious of and wary of and, and understand that this, that is an element of this story. But to also recognize that this is written from a perspective of a people who are never on top, who are always on the margins. So that flavors the interpretation, that inflavors sort of the way that this is presented. So just just to kind of put a pin on that and, and recognize that that's the case. Pharaoh calls Moses and Aaron back and says, I have sinned, forgive my sin. Just take these locusts away. They do. You know, God sends a west wind that comes, takes away the locusts. And Pharaoh changes his mind. So now we're leading up to the ninth. And then the final plague. And the stage has been set. Pharaoh has over and over and over again made a commitment, sort of stuck this course. Even his own officials are, are doubting him. Even his own officials are saying, why are you not doing something different? God has said, this is, this is all to show my power and to make it very clear who is at work in this process. It is all of the things sort of tied into one. So the continued sort of theme, the continued consideration is after repeated events and after those you trust say, hey, there's, there's something to be paying attention to. What do we do? Do we change course or do we stay the course? What is our end goal? Who is being affected? All of those things, these all need to be wrestled with, considered, applied. The hardness of heart, the ego, the hubris, the unwillingness to shift. We see the true economic um, impact on Egypt. Um, as far as eco uh, or archaeological evidence, there's not a whole lot of this period of time, which is interesting. But some have pointed to there is a um, uh, at least one, if not two, pharaohs. Um, I don't remember which dynasty, but it would the timing would work out roughly okay. And on these huge obelisks, these pillars with all of the names of the pharaohs, there are a few of them that have been literally just sort of etched out and a new pharaoh is put in their place. And so some have suggested that this pharaoh did such a poor job that they literally just erased his... Uh, dynasty in such a way that they're, they're, he's completely wiped from history. We're just not going to think about that anymore. Um, so that's an interesting. Anyway, as you are looking back over these nine plagues, 
or these ten or eight plagues at this point, and preparing yourself for what is to come, which is not fun. Once again, I invite you to reflect, journal, to pray, to meditate. And when you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we thank you for being with us today and for every sign of your truth and love in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for all works of Christian compassion. The good earth that is our home. Examples of wisdom and righteousness. Energy and strength to share your love. Each new insight into your grace. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We thank you for wise counsel. For opportunity after opportunity to shift. Gracious God, we remember in our own hearts the needs of others that we may reach up to claim your love for them and reach out to give your love in the name of Christ. Especially we pray for Orthodox and Coptic churches. Those subjected to tyranny and persecution. Those who are outcast or strangers. Those who offer welcome and hospitality. The renewal of those who despair. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for the family of Mel, who passed away this week. And for Carol, his widow, who fell and broke her nose. We pray for Gwen, who's recovering from shoulder surgery. For Laurel at, and family at the death of her father for her mother who fell and broke her wrist. For the birth of Elle, great-granddaughter of John and Linda. For Mary, a friend of Linda with family problems. For Laura, Cameron's sister with bone cancer. For Cameron and Brianna, who celebrated their first wedding anniversary and are in the process of buying a house. For Cullen, with an online request for prayer in spiritual conflict. And for a few unspoken requests. God of all who worship you, make us one with all your saints, and with any who are in you. Teach us to befriend the weak and welcome the outcast that we may serve the Lord Jesus Christ and live to offer him glory. In his holy name we pray. Amen.
Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Our liturgy came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. You can watch this video on YouTube and listen to it on Spotify and get an email with both on Substack. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time.